hello friends of the french for religion i am greeting you you are very welcome on my channel like today i will show you some more photos from my time when i was in the french for religion from february uh, 1985 to february 2002 before i come to the photos to the first photo let me tell you that this t-shirt this design was made by a french or a, a, an autrichian uh, legionnaire and his name was burda he reached the rank Adjun chef, Adjun chef Burda, Burda, and he was, uh, he had a very genuine talent for designs and paintings and all this stuff. Repose and pay, uh, mon Adjun chef, more majorum. So we start with the first photo from the day. <laughs> oh, no coffee, no worky, by the way. Yeah, no coffee, no worky. Uh, I love this mug, I love this coffee. Great, great, great. Adjutant Chef Burda, he was a great gentleman. Yeah. He was a great gentleman. We are starting with the first photo for today. And here on this photo you see me, myself and I and my my platoon. No, it was the platoon of Adjutant Chef Falco, but I was uh, detached to march with him through uh, for this parade. And this was in Guyana, in French Guyana, 1985. 1985 so what can we see uh, you see the front man who is giving the salute is adjutant chef falco and adjutant chef falco he was a man you fear him and you love him everybody feared him everybody loved him uh, he was i think he was coming from uh, italia or sicilia and he had all over the body and his face he had scarves and he was a really really tough guy he was a very good gentleman a very good uh, nco and uh, one of the best ncos i have met in my life for sure and um, let's come to the tenue we were before going further in explication for the man you can see our tony de parade uh, our tony de parade and um, let's start here from the right side you can see here the jump wings, the jump wings, because Falco was in the second rep before joining the third REI. We are here in the third REI in Condu, Commando Forge, and French Guyana. I was there for two years. The jump wings, we call it Placa Velo. Under the jump wings, you can hardly see the blue badge, and the blue badge is what is with a, a, a crest we have earned for the second world war for our uh, actions in the S second world war and this blue badge was given to us i think by uh by roosevelt president roosevelt after the war and and under the blue badge you can see the crest of the company la pucelle and this is the yeah no it's the crest of the regiment the regimental crest la pucelle uh, third of the third rei on the other side you can see of course all the medals the other side <laughs> around all the medals the, the legion has earned in their during their, their serv active service and you can see here the triple fourager triple fourager with the colors of the medaille militaire legion d'honneur and and croix de guerre huh? three colors and three fourager we call it the triple fourager on the head falco wears his uh, capi noir the black Cappy, as you know better than I do, white cappy is for normal legioners and the black cappy then is for NCOs and officers. Uh, also, Capra chef more than 15 years, sergeant, sergeant chef, adjunct, adjunct chef, major, and then four officers. And that's it. You can see uh, the normal legioners and uh, the other NCOs wearing the blue belt uh, and the FAMAS en bataille with a bayonet on the barrel. That's the point. Okay, let's come to the first range of NCOs. You can see far right. This is uh, Sergeant Eve. Uh, Sergeant Eve. He was a very good sportsman, a good runner, uh, um, exceptional uh, NCO. I loved him. I loved this guy. He was very human, very tough, very good runner, very good sportsman, very good NCO. Now in the middle, you can see a French guy. I don't know. I don't. I forget the name. And to the left side. I think this is also an Italian gentleman. So this was the first row of the Capi Noir. And after this, you can see the lines of the Capi Blanc. Capi Blanc is the is for the for the Legion as, you know, as, as I have been. And now you will ask yourself, where is Thomas Gas? You can see to the left, to the left side, an umbrella. The umbre umbrella is blue and white. 
and underneath the umbrella the gentleman with the crest shining here the crest shining this is me and i was at this time i was a legionnaire premier class so i was just before going to the cmu certificate militaire elementaire to do the caporize course yes french guiana 1985 and i go on to the next photo <laughs> yeah okay here you can see me deep in the jungle okay explication this was in french guiana in the jungle 1985 or 1986 i am sitting in front of my hammock the hammock is uh, behind me and you this was a brazilian hammock brazilian hammock what means with a, a mosquito net like a house and a mosquito net and very good mosquito net very good very good hammock with, with a very good mosquito net in, uh, around all around and uh, you can see that I am wearing two knives. Uh, the knives were Camelus. Why two? Because once I lost one knife deep in the jungle and then I was without knife. And when you are in a survival situation without knife or to defend yourself without weapon, uh, if you don't have another weapon, uh, it's not good. So starting from the day I lost my first Camelus, immediately I was looking forward to have a second one. And I always had one Camelus one knife in my rucksack and the other one on my bretel you know here on the on my on my centur centuron so when i've lost the rucksack i still had the other one and unverse so what else can we see you can see the berry of the third rei with the flam legion and you can see that i am mustard i had a i had a schnurrbart a mustache here and this is normally it's not usual but in the third rei we had two types of men can are allowed to wear mustache the, the pioneers, the pioneers, uh, the company equipment, they must wear the mustache. And the second ones are uh, starting from the grad capola, from the rank, rank capola. When you want to wear a mustache, you can do so, but you have to do the pass rapport capitaine. You have to have a, you have to uh, start a demand. You have to ask your commander in chief of the company. And in this time, it was come, uh, Captain Martin. He said yes. And I did so. That's why I have a mustache. Normally, it's not usual. In the second rep, nobody has a mustache. Believe me, nobody. <laughs> okay, this was for uh, the picture of French Guiana in 1985. And I go straight away to the next one. Here, you can see me, myself and I. This was a couple of years later in 2002. No, it was in uh, 1989. 1989, I was platoon leader. And I'm the man who uh, uh, was behind the, the katana sword. Uh, and the boys you can see all the boys are my platoon has been my platoon and all these boys had made a lot of intervention a lot of operations a lot of they have been to war you know they are really tough fighters uh, and uh, these boys are just genuine and tough and I spent two years with them I say just great and thank you boys and uh, to my right side, you can see uh, an Achiron. This is Achiron Shakti, and he took over the platoon after me. Huh? And uh, the katana, have a look. I have it here. And this is the katana sword they gave me. <laughs> oh, Schulz, I'm sorry. And I don't draw it because when you draw it, you have to use it. And uh, the katana has uh, my name, my matricule, and my unit. And uh, I was very. Uh, very uh, grateful where I was very uh, very uh, uh, yeah I was very touched by the gesture that my boys gave me the katana spirit thank you boys uh, thanks <laughs> wherever you are right now I don't know we have lost one each other but thanks thanks a lot <laughs> you know uh, tears are coming up here yeah. so I have to change the, I have to change the photo going to the next one okay we go to the next one straight away next photo you can see uh, here um, I'm not sergeant chef I'm sergeant NCO, Sergeant, it's the first NCO rank. Sergeant Thomas Gast in Central African Republic in uh, 1995. I'm standing in front of the gutter, Mare de Gata. This is deep in the savannah and all around about 100, 150 kilometers. You have no, no village, no town, no uh, nothing, nothing. Just uh, crocodiles, hippopotam. Uh, because normally in the Mare de Gata, you have a lot of hippopotams and crocodiles. You have to be aware, you have to be careful. <laughs> not going too close and uh, and yeah and uh, French for legion we have been there to hunt down uh, braconniers braconniers are poachers poachers um, who killed elephants and rhinoceros uh, 
for the even for the even elfenbein and we were there to protect also uh, a couple of uh, of uh, a french couple who was keeping the the how can i say it it's kind of territory where uh, the where the couple of the french couple settled down with uh, friends to make war against poachers and to keep the region safe and to uh, have an eye on the animals it's like a national park you know a national park this was the word i'm looking for and you can see me with my Tony de Comba. On the left side, I wear a fuller. This shows me, this shows the company, our company, the color of our company. In the second rep, you have, uh, we had at this time, first company green, second company red, third company noir, black, and the fourth company gray. So every company had a, this, a different uh, domain of warfare. And our domain was green. Uh, green color was uh, uh, war and build up areas, you know, night fighting and uh, Urban, urban combat warfare and you can see my gallon shining and on the left side you can see also the the first ad kit the first ad kit very very useful and my magazine pouch for uh, magazine magazine um, ammunition, ammunition for uh, famas <laughs> so uh, yeah nice Mar de Gata, central african republic 1995 i go on to the next photo all right you can see here thomas gast um, I was very uh, physical, very in very good shape, and this photo was made in about uh, 19 whatever, 95 something like this. And we are here to make. Uh, I think it was the challenges of of uh, Saint Michel in Conrafali Calvi, uh, in the second rep to some Rashmo Atronjet parachutist. We uh, we made uh, the challenges, and here we did uh, 100 meter relay. And the man who passed me the relay to me was. Uh, was uh, Goma. Goma, he was at this time lieutenant and afterwards he was uh, captain, uh, commander in chief of the Krupp, uh, commander the Recherche Action Donne Profonde or CCP, later CCP. And then he was uh, later on his career, he was a general uh, two stars. Herve Goma, uh, very genuine guy. I, I think he was also commander in chief of the third REI once. And you can see all the colors uh, red, green, uh, black, and yellow. Uh, different companies. Uh, the color who is not here is blue because the blue is the CER company Eclairage et Dapuis and they have been in operation. Yeah. Conrafali, somewhere in between 1995 1996. Relay, 100 meter relay, Saint Michel. Yes, and I go on with the next photo. This photo was uh, shows uh, Sergeant Chef Thomas Gas. I'm Sergeant Se Chef. Yeah, I think uh, Sergeant, Sergeant, Sergeant Thomas Gast. We can, I can hardly make the difference. And I was going to to descend to town, to go to town. And the photo was taken in Djibouti, in Djibouti, in Arta, in Con Amilakwari. And I think it was around 1992, 93. Uh, you can see I was MCO, Sergeant. In my right hand, I have my cappy. Was this one? Yeah. The Capi Noir, black black Capi. You can see the galon. You can see the crest of the of the ancien BP, the ancien BP, uh, 11 Brigade parachutist. You can see, uh, yeah, all the all the items we wear on the tenue de, de sortie. This was tenue de sortie with, with the short and uh, long stockings. Uh, you can see the the fourage of the second rep, uh, Legion d'honneur, and the colors of the Legion d'honneur. You can see the placavello. You can see the the crest of the regimental crest, uh, uh, the pucel of the second rep, not of the third, the thirteenth DVLO, but of the second rep. And yes, I was going to town, and in town in Chiburi, we had a lot of, lot of, yeah, <laughs> lot of beer, a lot of girls, and a lot of, lot of action in nighttime. Very good, very, very exceptional. And the Con Amilequari and Arta was not too big. There was place only for one company and it was really on a rock on, on a rock uh, we call it Adla nest and all around uh, all around uh, the camp i mean stones sand desert and monkeys monkeys sino sino uh, like uh, pavian and they were really aggressive you have to take care about your ass <laughs> don't cross don't go out and cross angry uh, sinos this could be fatal to you. <laughs> okay, I go in right away, straight away to the next one. Yo, here can, you can see Thomas Gast in uh, the Central African Republic. And we have been on tournée 
on tactical patrol and our patrol didn't leave the one day or a couple of hours our patrol in the country in the area country uh, they leased for for weeks so we were sitting here on, on a dodge on a dodge truck with a u.s truck by the way and uh eight hours sitting on the truck with a farmer's in the hand looking for bandits and on my head i had uh, the chapeau de bruce chapeau de bruce against the heat against the, the, the sun and i'm I, I remember very well because normally it's forbidden to hear music of course but this time i had a walkman the old walkman you know was blue one and on the other side you can see it i had uh, i had the, the bubble you know the thing in my ear the bubble in my ear to hear the music and i heard from the morning to the evening the who i loved the who you know and if the, if my nco my uh, my my team leader could see this what wow, he, he wouldn't give me a good time <laughs> but he but i uh hide this very well so the who in the Central African Republic, 1989, Thomas Gass with the Chapeau de Bruce on his head. We go on with the next photo. Okay, French Guiana, 1987. You can see us here with an anaconda. And a tortue, a tortue is a, 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 a turtle. A turtle. We had two small turtles here and an anaconda. Both ended up in the in the casserole <laughs> in our estomach because we have been here on a, on a survival course starting a survival course and this anaconda was about six meter long it was a big one six to seven meters long you can see uh lichones are wearing the the jungle tenue uh, jungle tenue and uh yeah i'm the gen i'm the guy this one two three the third from the left side and the sec the fifth to the left side is my team leader was sergeant lar afterwards he was major in the jrle groupement recruitment legion étrangère he was a good uh, he was a very good nco uh he was very uh young also and uh yeah french guiana 1987 with an anaconda who ended up in our estomach and i go on to the next photo yep uh, yo this is a very genuine photo i was sergeant or sergeant chef we are in Djibouti. i think it was in 1993 94 something like this and i'm standing on a very genuine place called gubet el karab uh, uh, devil's ground the the locals call it devil ground and yeah, you can see the the sea after me, the, the water, nobody was, uh, from the locals, nobody dared to swim inside. Nobody dared to go fishing there because they say inside they are, there are monsters. And when you make one step inside in the water, you make two steps, you make three steps. And after the fourth step, it goes 100 meters downward, you know. And uh, the sharks who are in the Gubere Karab, they are very big because they are protected by a natural barrier uh, when when it goes to go in the gulf of aden gulf of tajura gulf of aden and then to the indian ocean so they are protected and they're growing 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 because they don't have any natural enemy yeah natural enemy and um, the, the history says that uh, jacques cousteau you know the french diver jacques cousteau once he had a cage and in the cage he put a camel a dromeda a camel and they descended the cage in the Gubel del Carab, 100 meters, and when they lift the cage after one day, the camel, the dromeda, was dis disappeared, and all the, the cage was 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 torn, you know, uh, crazy. <laughs> so, do you believe in monsters in the Gubel del Carab? I do so. <laughs> so, next photo. Okay, Gubel del Carab. Uh, you can see Thomas Gast here in 1992 during the Bosnia War. And I am standing in front of my VAB, VAB vehicle, I'm blinded, 13 ton. I met the driver's license for this. You can see my blue helmet, United Nations Protection Force, and the body armor. The body armor has a weight of about 14 uh, to 15 kilos, very, very heavy. You can see the machine browning gun, uh, the, 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 the browning gun, caliber 50 or uh, 12 .7, Deuce, La Doucette, uh, and, uh, and that's it. And uh, I think we are here in Kiseljak. It was the Danish headquarter. It was outside of Sarajevo, so it was the first time for us. We could take outside, we could take off the helmet, off the body armor. No noise, no artillery, no mortar, no bullets flying all around. And it was good. It was good. Because we have been six months in Sarajevo. In Sarajevo there was a war. From the morning to the evening and at night time. War. It was horrible. It was horrible. Okay. Yeah. 
Kiselzak, 1992, Sarajevo, Bosnian War, Thomas Gast, within the United Nations Protection Force. Going on straight away to the next photo. Here we are again, are again in uh, Sarajevo, and this was in Railovac. It was a couple of years later, the war was over, it was in 1999, and I was at Chudon, and this time I was in the headquarters company, and behind me you can see the, all the, the Armada vehicle trucks from the S4, Stabilization Force, uh, for the Bosnia War, and I have my, uh, my camouflage tenue, and I was in the, as I told you, in the headquarters company, in the CCS company, Common and Water Service, that's why I'm wearing the yellow, Fuller in my hand, I have my beret, and you can see a watch on my left hand, on my left arm. It's very unusual for me. Normally, I, d I don't uh, wear watches. And the opposite side, you cannot see. There are German troops. They made uh, a couple of uh, movement patrolling with us. Yeah. So, Railovac, Sarajevo, 1999. And I go straight away to the next photo. I think this is the last one. You can see here my group. I was uh, chef the group. You see all the boys, I can tell you every name of the boys. Yeah. I will not do it because some anonymat are anonymat, uh, so they have to hide their name. So I don't tell, tell you the names, I know the real name and I don't know the name uh, under anonymat. Yeah, from the left side you have a, this was a, a French guy, and the next one was a French guy that you, with the, with the, with, with the, with the eyeglasses, this is a, a Portuguese guy. No, a Spanish guy, and underneath him, uh, you can see a Portuguese guy, and then a guy coming from from Lettland or or Litauen, a Litauen. In the front, you can see a Polonia guy. To the right, a Polonia guy, and with the FRF2, this was also a Spanish guy. In his hands, he has a FRF2, Fusil Reputation Model F2, caliber 7.62 uh, point uh, times uh, 51 NATO caliber, uh, uh, shooting range until 800 meters, very good one. And we are on the Mare de Gata, and this time you can see the hippopotam behind me to the left side. Yeah. You have to take care not coming too close because they are they are real dangerous. And in night time, in night time, you could hear sometimes uh, crossing the hippopotam our camp. <laughs> you know, uh, just uh, beside our guard guards we had. But uh, normally they are not offensive. But you have to take care not coming too close. Then they get angry and then they will attack you. And when a hippopotam attacks you, it's not good for you. <laughs> because these beasts are running very quick. Yeah. They are very quick in the water, but they are also very quick on land while marching. And they, the weight of a hippopotam like this is about, whatever, uh, 1,000 kilos. But when they cross the, the, the camp, you cannot hear them. They are, they are really smooth marchers. You know, oh, too smart, too smart, too smart, too smart. You, sometimes you can hear a noise like... <laughs> Like this, they're doing like this, and in the nighttime, and then you know, a hippopotamus is crossing, is, <laughs> is crossing the bivouac. So I think that was it for today. Yes, that was it for today. I showed you some photos, photographs, and memories part two in a very short time. I uh, I uh, hope that you stay in good shape. I hope that you stay in good health, and I say farewell for the next time. Uh, coming up, uh, part three, uh, photographs and memories, pictures from Thomas Gast as he was in the French for religion for 17 years. Amitié les jeunes, your Thomas Gast. Bye bye. Thank you. Hello, Jérôme, best on pantalon. Gaston, comment ça va? Schultz, everything's fine? Right. No coffee, no work here. <laughs> Good. And by the way, if you want to support my channel, my work here, just go to the description under the video, in the video description. You can find a link. It's my merch link. Click on it. Choose one or two pieces like, like this one or like a mug like this. And, and this is the best way to support Thomas Gast and his channel. Thanks for this. Bye -bye.